on the board, we are looking at a real life financial situation. I am dealing with a kingdom citizen. This is a pastor on the board here. This person's income has roughly 10,000 a month is what they're bringing in. Their expenses overestimated 6,200 a month, debt 300 grand, cash flow $3,800 underestimated four major numbers. I overestimated expenses, underestimated cash flow. With that being said, that leaves room for error in our favor for this pastor to do better than whatever is displayed on the board here this evening. With that being said, now that we know our four major numbers, what are our debt tools? This particular individual has a personal unsecured revolving line of credit for 25 grand at an 8.75% rate. We also have a home equity line of credit in the second position for $76,500 at an interest rate of 4.34%. We have two debt tools, two debt weapons, okay? With that, here is a list of all the debts this person has. The only debt I am not displaying here is their mortgage, okay? Their mortgage is, I, um, I took that off the board because we're not even gonna get to the mortgage. Right now we're in a situation where we're just dealing with consumer debts and then debts on our debt tool, on our debt weapons. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six different credit card debts, one of them being on 0% interest till August of 2022. We have a loan on 0%. And then we have a car loan at a 5.12%. Now, I underlined these two numbers right here, very important. Prior to working with me, this pastor has been overpaying, making extra payments to certain debts, right? So with this particular loan, the monthly minimum payment is 431. Pastor's paying 500 for the car loan. It's 545, pastor's paying 800 per month. I wanna give you those details in advance just to keep that in mind. And we're gonna come back to that later. In addition to these debts, he also has debt on both of our debt weapons. Got a P-Lock, owes $12,510. Monthly minimum payment is $250 with a extra, so total, actually paying between 600 and a thousand in reality this person's paying a thousand bucks per month towards the lock so that's 750 dollars more right and with the home equity line of credit there is no monthly payment because that is the tool that we're going to be doing velocity banking on right if there was a payment then Typically, with most of our debt tools, they will charge us 2% of the balance, right? So if I owe 40,300 times 2%, monthly payment's probably gonna be somewhere around $800. That's typically the case. 12,510 times 2%, see how I got the 250? Boom, that's another principle right there. So whenever you're obtaining a debt tool, right? or you're getting multiple debt tools or credit cards, typically when it comes to revolving debt, they charge 2% of the balance. Credit cards sometimes go higher, three upwards of 4%, just depends. That is a question you can always ask, something I always address anyways, um, in my videos in the course and then even on publicly in the playlist that talks about all about the line of credit, all the questions to ask, pregame work, you name it. So what we're going to be focusing on is some pregame work before we get things in motion. Some things that oftentimes we either just forget, we don't realize inefficiencies in our strategy when it comes to paying off debt. We're going to be focusing on that. And we're also going to be really, really honing in on our borrowing cost, making sure that what we do makes sense at the end of the day we're borrowing from peter to pay paul 
you're leveraging OPM, you're borrowing debt, okay? So you're taking on leverage, you're taking on risk. Anytime you borrow, you're taking on risk, right? Our goal is to reduce that risk to damn near nothing, zero, which means you create arbitrage, or the other word is you offset your borrowing costs and you create a positive arbitrage. I borrowed at 3% and I went and earned 10. What's the difference? 7%, get it? So although I paid three here, I earned 10 here, I net seven, what's my borrowing costs? Zero, positive arbitrage, seven. That's all we're doing in velocity banking all day long. Same in infinite banking as well, all right? So recap, income, 10,000, expenses, 62, overestimated, cash flow, underestimated, 3,800. Now, let's talk about the pregame work first. Those of you, some of you have multiple debt tools and oftentimes, 100% of the time that I have worked with people, you really only need one. So this is just based off my experience working with people like you 100% of the time that I've worked with someone that has had more than one debt tool, we end up coming to a conclusion of just using one. Why? The more money you squeeze together, the more cash flow you have in one location, the more powerful those dollars become, right? That's reason number one. Two, just on a practical sense here, practically speaking, again, 100% of the time when I'm dealing with people like yourself, okay, you guys get confused, you get lost. Oh wait, I was supposed to make a chunk here. Oh wait, I'll, uh, but the, the, you know, this bank and oh shoot, I forgot to make an external transfer. And so most of the time, every single time, we come to a conclusion of just using one debt tool at a time and move from there. Oftentimes, when we start out with one particular debt tool, whether it be a credit card or a PLOC, eventually, I've said in, in many of my other videos, we upgrade to the HELOC, right? Say you move from a PLOC to a second position HELOC, that is an upgrade and you now have two debt tools. Your PLOC mostly will become obsolete. You don't need to use it, why? Well, the PLOC was at 10% and now your second position HELOC is at four. That is obsolete. You just reduced your borrowing costs by 6%. Stick with the HELOC at the four, then, you wipe out so much debt on the property that you go and uh, restructure the mortgage and you replace it with a first lien HELOC at a three and a half percent, three percent. So you went from four to three. Now in this case, when you uh, replace your primary first lien mortgage with a first lien HELOC, the second position HELOC disappears, that closes and you just now have the first lien HELOC. That is an upgrade as well, right? <clears throat> Scenarios where it makes sense to have multiple HELOCs is when you're now in the real estate investing space where you're acquiring multiple properties and you're putting HELOCs on multiple properties. That makes sense to me. I have no issue with that. My issue is when you're just focusing on paying off debt and you're like, oh, let me go get this PLOC and let me go get this credit and let me go get what are you doing? You're gonna end up confusing yourself. So that is just my warning. And I'm gonna prove it here right now with this particular case where I say, hey, look, this pastor is using the personal line of credit at 25K at 8.75%. And he's allocating a bunch of his cash flow to pay that off. Meanwhile, he's in debt on the HELOC at the 4.34%. And he's not using the HELOC. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, buddy, You've outgrown the PLOC at 8.75. You now have the HELOC. What are you doing fooling around with this, that tool? So recommendation, when I talked to this person, where they said, you should just be paying the monthly minimum on that debt tool. Redirect the cash flow to your now main debt tool of 76,500 at 4.34%. Why Denzel, look at the rate. 
what a drop that is in cost. The more money, cash flow, and I allocate to this, I can reduce that effective rate of 4.34 and I can cut that in half. So it becomes like 2%. That's even better. Let me prove it. Here's your formula. You take balance owed on your debt tool, or if your debt tool's at zero and you're determining what your chunk amount is, you take 66% of the chunk amount times that balance by your rate. So in this scenario, 40,300 is how much we owe on the debt tool. 4.34 is the rate. Times that, you get 1,749.02. Divide by 365 equals $4.79 a day. That's your borrowing costs. In addition, most of you are using credit cards to run your bills. So is this person. Roughly 1,500 out of the 62, 2% cash back rewards, $30 a month that I'm receiving in cash back rewards to offset my borrowing costs. So daily rate, 0.79, starting balance, 40,300. We know what our borrowing cost is. We know our four major numbers. We know our debt tool. We know our debts. And then what's next? We determine what our chunk amount is going to be towards a debt. How do we do that? Next principles, next fundamental rules. You'll always see this in every scenario. Two thirds of the line of credit, 76,500 times 66%, boom. 50,490 should be my chunk amount towards debt. Another number to help make sense of that 50,490, take the cash flow times it by 12. 3,800 times 12, $45,600, right? Anywhere between 45,600 and 50,490 should be my chunk amount towards debt. This applies when you are at a zero or close to zero balance. What's happening, what's the issue here? Pastor has a balance on his debt tool. So should we chunk from 40,000 to 50,000, tack on another 10 to wipe out some debt? Or should we position ourselves first? Now it's time for you to engage. 20 plus or so people in the house. Question, I owe money on the HELOC, 40,300. Do I make a chunk of roughly 10 grand right off the bat towards debt or do I position myself first before making a chunk? Get some interaction. Yvette, hello. Hello, Stacy. Hello, Bobby says, let's collaborate. Cool. Tanja, hello. We get one person. What do we do? Do we go in, guns blazing, make a chunk of 10K? Or do we wait and position ourselves? What do we do? Tiana, position yourself first. I like it. Why is that? Why do we position ourselves? So I don't keep making mistakes. How about that? Very simple answer. Problem number one that I highlighted earlier is this person is pastor sending his money in different locations. So I should redirect that cash flow. That is a part of positioning, correct? So that's one move to position ourselves. So we're not gonna chunk. We all agree in here, it makes sense not to chunk right now because we need to position ourselves. Great, glad you agree with me. So with that being said, 1,000 minus 250 is $750, right? The 800 a month towards the car minus 545, that's 255, redirect. And then 500 minus 431 is 69 bucks, okay? So part of positioning ourselves is redirecting cash flow. So if we were to just pay the monthly minimums on every other debt and do velocity banking on our debt tool to position ourselves for the next chunk, we would actually be going faster than sending our dollars into different locations with no purpose. This person 
pastor sends $800 a month to the car, that money is going to die. This money is paying extra towards a debt that isn't charging him any interest. That money is going to die. Thousand bucks over here, useless, money's dying. I'm, I'm not seeing it again. I'm not maximizing and being efficient with every single dollar. So let's redirect it. 69 plus 255 plus 750. If we could just redirect 1,074, add on to the 38, we now have a cash flow of $4,874 that we could be dumping on this 40K on our debt tool to position us in a very good opportunity to make a substantial chunk towards debt. You agree? Wonderful. I'm glad you agree. So with that being said, if my cash flow goes up, what goes down? The expense, right? So the expenses go down, cash flow goes up from simply redirecting. That new number expense is going to be 5,000 one two six oh one five thousand one twenty six oh one when you redirect the other thousand bucks okay so we agree on that point that's great now we run the numbers now we know okay we just positioned ourselves now we're going to do velocity banking we know how much we should chunk but we're going to do velocity banking on the debt tool right now here's another question now that you and i both agree to position ourselves, how long should we do velocity banking on our debt tool? Should I, let me phrase the question. Should I do velocity banking on my debt tool till it hits zero? Or should I not wait to hit zero on the HELOC before making a chunk? What do you think? Should we, uh, should I chunk around when the balance hits like 30,000, 20? Or should I have it go all the way down to zero? What are your thoughts? Let me get some, some of your thoughts on that. And the vet said, position yourself before making a chunk. That's wonderful. Carlos also agrees, position yourself first. Let me get some feedback from you guys. What do you think? Should we do velocity banking on the debt tool until it's zeroed out and then make a chunk? Or should we uh, do velocity banking for a period of time, not necessarily going to zero? Poppy says, wait and position. Tanja, wait, not wait. So when she says not wait, I think she's referring to not waiting to go to zero. Okay, I agree with you on that. Bobby says, wait and position. Okay, well, I can get some other thoughts. And in the meantime, what I'm gonna do now is illustrate velocity banking for just a couple of months to see where we stand and we'll come back to that uh, question that I asked earlier to see if it makes a little more sense. So 40,300 is the balance. We've agreed to pay the monthly minimum on all the other debts. Income, 10,000, we're in the month of February. I spoke to this person earlier in the month. So in the month of February, 2022, income comes in to the HELOC, balance goes down to what? Minus 10K, 30,300. Do the formula times 4.34 percent boom divide by 365 you're gonna get this number three dollars and sixty cents a day add expenses those that's your new expense number don't do 62 do that one you're gonna get 35,426.01 with a daily average cost of 421 then what you do is you add four dollars and 21 cent $3.60, $4.79. Add the three, divide by three is your average daily cost times 30 days. My first month of borrowing cost in the HELOC should be $126.02. So I went from 1749.02 at the top highest balance that's how much i would pay for the whole year and now in one month i'm down to 12602 if all you did was stopped right there and said okay 12601 times 12 months 
$1,500. So 4.34% is $1,749. What is 15? Like maybe four? I don't really know how to do the, there's a way to do it to check that formula. I forget how to do it, but I'm just gonna like say times 4%. Okay, that's 16. The number earlier was 15. 12602. So I just, in one month doing velocity banking, I brought the rate of the HELOC at 4.34 and just brought it below four. It's probably around 3.9. If we just stopped right there, did velocity banking, paid 126 a month for 12 months, I, I manipulate the 4.34, now it's below four. And that's the power of simple interest and doing velocity banking, velocity of money. So you know that the first month of doing velocity banking is your most costly month because you're either making a chunk or you're paying down, in this case, from a chunk, right? So after one whole month, end of February, the balance is here, 35,522.03. I added this number 12602 to the ending balance, tack in the interest. Minus $30 from cashback rewards, my actual borrowing cost is 9602. Put that number off to the side in your notes. We'll address that later. So let's keep going. Beginning of March 2022, minus income, add expenses. Do the same thing, times the 4.34, you get a number, divide by 365, boom, you get your daily rates. See what I did, 422, 303, 364, add the three, divide by three, times 30, boom. 108.90, minus 30, actual borrowing costs, 78.90. This is two months, so in, I went from 126 down to 108.90, dropped by uh, what? almost 20 bucks, right? Not bad at all. <clears throat> End of March, balance is at, when you add the 108, balance is at 30,756.94, okay? So we got February, end of February, one month, March, two months, this is now three months. Three months in, velocity banking, income, Goes in, expenses out, ending balance, 25,882.95 plus interest, $91.87, minus $30, cash back rewards. Actual borrowing costs, 6187. Let's look at this now. In three months, your actual borrowing costs Add 6187, 7890, 9602, you're gonna get $236.79. Okay? That's over three months. Take 236.79, times it by four, gives you 12 months. 36912, right? You get $947 and 18 cents, 4.34 on 40K over 12 months is 17.50. What is my actual effective rate? It's, it's roughly below two and a half percent. I just cut it in half in three months. You see how your borrowing costs we're paying very close attention to that. So we know, at least for the whole first 12 months of Velocity Banking, what is my actual borrowing cost going to be? Only two and a half percent. For as long as I stay around this number of 40,300. What's our chunk amount? 50,490. So add another 10 grand your borrowing costs might jump to like 3.1%, maybe 3%, if that. Do you agree with that? 
So it says 4.34. We manipulate it. Cashback rewards, velocity banking, income in, expenses out, cash flow stays. I manipulate the rate, nearly cutting it in half. So now the question is, when do we make our chunk? It's three months in. We're now in April of 2022. End of April, 2022. Question, should I make a chunk now? If so, how much? I want you to comment. Question, should I make a chunk in April? Right towards the end of April? If so, how much? Or should we wait and keep doing velocity banking on the debt tool? What do you think? All right, let me scroll up. Wes says, let's not wait to zero. Let's go sooner. I like it. Carlos, it doesn't have to be zero. Okay, we got some people learning, like it. Don't wait till zero, velocity banking period all the time. Okay, I would chunk it before it gets to zero for a period of time. Good, do it for a period of time. Okay, we're on the same page, I like it. Chunk around 20 grand, okay, I like it. Around 20, where are we at? Around 20, uh-oh. And she also says it's such a low interest rate. You're exactly correct says or chunk because then it frees up the money to be used again elsewhere at the low interest rate. Now we're getting some details. Bobby says do it at 30. Okay, cool. So you guys, you're seeing it. You're like, oh, wait a minute. We shouldn't do velocity banking all the way to zero on the HELOC because it's at such a low rate and when I look at his other debts, he's getting killed at these higher interest rates. So we don't want to spend too much time paying down a 4.34% rate, which in reality, it's like two and a half, three, when I'm paying 15%, 22%, 23%, 23%, 5.12%, 14%, 8.75% over on the 12th, right? That doesn't make sense. We want to make sure we don't stay too long in there. So I'm glad you guys are seeing that, right? So in my opinion, I would absolutely chunk around 20, 30K. 30K being the highest, 20K being the lowest. I don't want to wait too long, okay? So I told pastor, I said, listen, this is underestimating. You're probably most likely going to beat these numbers. So I'd say your first chunk should likely be in April, maybe May of 2022. First chunk. Now we figure out how much, okay? Now we figure out how much. Obviously, you go through the months, the balances go down a little bit. But again, I'm going to I'm going to over uh, estimate, create room for error on purpose and just go off of the balances in February of 2022 and just add them up. But just so you know, the chunk will actually be smaller than whatever I display. So we have by April, roughly a balance of twenty five thousand eight eighty two ninety five. Yes, fifty thousand four ninety is my chunk amount. That's my threshold. I shouldn't really breach that, especially with this particular these particular numbers. No reason why I should over leverage beyond fifty thousand four ninety. I may not even have to go that high. <clears throat> so minus twenty five eight eight two. 95 my chunk amount should be somewhere around that 24k number so now let's look at the debts typically here's where debt snowball kicks in we go from smallest to highest debt just to see get a little gauge of where we're at in potential cash flow gain and interest savings right so let's go from smallest to highest 986 27 plus three grand, plus 4,500, plus 9,500, skip over 98, that's $100, 0%, skip over that, 
This is 15,000. That might be too much. 11,500. That's at 0%. Skip. Car loan. Too big. 25,500. Mm. Too big. Uh-oh. Remember that P-lock. 12,510. We could throw some money at that. Right? The remaining. But we know for certain we want to chunk at least this amount. 17,000. 986, 27, and you and I both know that number is actually smaller, which gives us more potential space to knock that out. So let's go back to our 50,490 minus 25,882.95. This is our max chunk amount, 24,607, 05 minus 17,986, 27, 6,620.78 difference, okay? So 17,98627 pays off one debt, right? One, two, three, four. Pays off four debts. I get cash flow 52. 60 bucks, 115, 190. Yes, in agreement. In addition to that cash flow gain, I redirect 14%, 15.99, 23.91, 22.99. Let me ask you a question. Does this, does, does pastor here on the board, does his sermons get better? What do you think moving forward? Is his energy gonna go up? Is the congregation gonna get excited about this? I don't know about you. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get real excited. You tell me I can redirect 14, 15, 23, 22% to 4.34, which you and I just did the math and determined that the reality is the borrowing cost is really around two and a half percent to three. That's incredible. Yes or yes? Yes. Okay, let's keep going. Paying two fifty a month on that twelve thousand five ten, we got six thousand six twenty. All right, this is being super conservative now. Twelve thousand five ten minus six thousand six twenty seventy eight. It at least wipes out more than fifty percent of the debt. So I can at least guarantee a cash flow redirect of $125 at the very least. You can agree with me on that, right? Because they're only going to charge 2% of the balance. 5889 times 2% of the balance, $117, right? Is the payment 250 minus 117. So a little over half redirected of cash flow. Does that make sense? <clears throat> 8.75 coming to 4.34. Very conservative here. This is our chunk amount. He could, this uh, pastor could chunk on the low end this amount and pay off four debts or pay off four debts plus more than 50% of the PLOC for a total chunk of 24,607.05. And again, you have to minus $60, 115, 190, 52, 25 in the month of February, March, and April. When you do that, that allows more money to go to the PLOC, right? To pay that down even further. So that's our first chunk, which brings our balance up to on the HELOC. Now we're at 50,490 in the month of May, let's say starting out top of the month, May, and we now have a cash flow gain of the 133 at least, $52, $60, 115, and 190. So we get a $550 cash flow increase, right? Cash flow gain, boom. Then you take expenses are 5,126. Oh, one minus 550 
Expenses are now 4,576,01 oh, coming out of pocket, right? 10,000 minus 4,576,01. Oh, Cash flow is now 5,000 or 23.99. 5,000 times 12. I'm now breaching 66% based off cash flow times 12, right? And again, we don't even need to do all that. I'm just showing you how much more powerful cash flow is when you group it together. Put the cash flow together. It's gonna be more stronger. This, this is also true in the real estate world when you syndicate money with people. When you get in a real estate syndication, instead of you investing in real estate by yourself, what if you did it with others, you pooled your money together in a real estate acquisition, could that not yield a higher cash flow percentage wise to all the participants? You would, you would yield a higher cash flow because you're able to acquire more than you would with your little funds. Same exact thing here. Group the money together. Group the cash flow together. All income goes into the main debt tool. Expenses come out, cash flow stays. You effectively manipulate the rate, whatever is being uh, given to you, and you reduce that even further to help offset your overall borrowing costs. And when you do that, without a shadow of a doubt, you're going faster than debt snowball, debt avalanche, making extra payments, going faster. So being that we have now a $550 cash flow increase, we're gonna go faster in terms of how we uh, pay down the HELOC now. Because now these debts are gone, you saved all those interests, right? Doing phenomenal. <clears throat> so the second chunk, again, knowing that we don't have to wait to hit zero, right? We don't have to wait to hit zero. Shoot, we don't even have to wait to get to 10K or 20K. Because just like Tanya said earlier, Taina, I think that's how you say it. The rate is so low, right? And if you really wanted to determine when your borrowing cost goes to like literally zero, it's going to be around when the balance is somewhere around 10K. Why? Because the income is 10K. Right? So your borrowing cost is gonna be like, that, that's like hitting zero. Once you get around to like 10K for this particular, it's kind of like hitting zero. Why wait? Make your next chunk. You've got all this space to work with. So let's, let's put it to use, right? So the very next chunk is likely to occur May, June, July, three months out, top of the month, August. Why not? Rinse, repeat. So within three months, total four, if that, they should make, pastors should make their next chunk. And it's likely gonna be at, in August, because this credit card expires in August. And if I'm not mistaken, this loan also expires in August. So that's 100 and 431. And that PLOC, that was like, you know, it's like a hundred or so uh, payment, right? Uh, of cash flow recovery. So 117 over here, roughly 100 and 431. That's another five, 600 plus dollars just three months later. And again, we, we're rerouting, even though these weren't charging interest, they're gonna come in. So. On the credit card, the interest was gonna jump to somewhere around 20%. And this loan, I believe the rate was above six or 7%, I, I forget. But I know it's above 4.34. And then we know the PLOCs at the 8.75. So all of those debts are higher than 4.34. And again, we've already proved that the actual effective borrowing costs is somewhere around two and a half, three percent on a three month window, right? Oh no, but for the whole year, right? We proved that for the whole year, two and a half. So only six months 
six, seven months roughly of doing velocity banking come August, right? Let's run those numbers. Let's not play games. Let's run those numbers. So we already know I'm gonna delete this right here. We already know that was our first chunk right there. That's our chunk number. Not gonna delete that one. Not gonna erase that. HELOC went up to 50,490. And we've got these numbers here. That's my scale, 50,490 minus income. I'm not gonna do all the, the borrowing costs. That's, uh, I'll just, you know, estimate it. But it's not gonna make a huge difference. Minus income, add expenses, 45, 7601. Balance goes to we chunked end of April, right? So end of May, balance should be here, somewhere around here. Add interest, it's probably another hundred dollars, right? Hundred and thirty, right? So you can do that math. Nothing crazy. So I'll just write plus interest. To be transparent right end of may june income expenses boom 39 see how much faster you go plus interest that's june minus income plus expenses going out 34 218 three that's july uh-oh we're getting around chunk range yes agree disagree Twenty-eight thousand. august august we know that two debts expire on zero percent so depending on what day it expires, we'll make that chunk before, like the day before, two, three days before, the actual debt expires on zero interest to make sure that we pay no interest whatsoever. And we can determine that our chunk is either going to be 50,490 minus, hold on, 50,490 minus 34,000. So my chunk is going to be somewhere around 16,000 on the low end to minus 28,794. Anywhere between 16 and 21K, very similar to that first chunk that we made. And what do we pay off? P lock, loan, and that credit card, right? And again, isn't that balance gonna be a lot lower and this balance and that balance? So when you actually do the math, you might be able to throw in this debt as well and, and get some of that 361 and reroute that 23.91. I wouldn't doubt it. Cause again, all of these numbers have been inflated to my disadvantage to pastor's advantage if he beats my numbers on the board i'm telling you the man's sermons are going to get better right his performance day-to-day -day, lifestyle i'm being funny right but i'm also being very real with you like the momentum shoot pastor might go make more money he might bring in eleven thousand. he might spend less cash flow more there's so many different external factors that can improve my numbers. So if you're satisfied with the numbers on the board, just imagine what pastor actually does, right? I'd be willing to bet that by August, all that's done, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight debts get removed from February, 2022 to August, 2022. I'd be willing to bet. And then all we got left is the car and his mortgage. The car would be the next one. That's an obvious win. 5.12, move it to 4.34, 4.34 becomes 2.5 to three. 
and then we're left with the mortgage. The mortgage interest rate is at a 3.625%. So by then, we might go and get a first lien HELOC to get a matching rate of 3.6, probably even less than that, right? And even if the rate is higher, what do we know? What do we know? Even if the rate is higher, 4.34 is not really what we're paying. We're paying more like two and a half. So as long as I can bring my effective borrowing costs below whatever I'm paying off, I'm going to go faster than if you were just to make extra payments each and every month. And my lesson is complete.